Welcome to this video on the Runge-Kata methods. Um, by the end of this video, you will be able to calculate numerical ODE solution using different Runge-Kata methods. So we saw in a previous video that the approach to arrive at a higher order method was to calculate the slope as the average of slopes calculated at multiple intermediate points. And now let's try to push this idea by calculating the slope at, as the uh, weighted average at n intermediate points. And in this formula then the c sub i are the weights and the k sub i would be the slopes at those intermediate points. Now the slopes are calculated at points and we would start out with the first slope calculated at the known current point xi, yi, and then we would calculate a second slope at some intermediate location at xi plus a2 times h, where a2 would be the fraction that we want to go within the interval from xi to xi plus 1, but we would also evaluate the right-hand side function f at an intermediate y value. And that y value would be calculated at yi plus the current known slope that we know at this point is just k1, so we would take a weight b21 times that slope k1 that we currently just know times the step size h. That, was, that would give us our second intermediate slope, k2. And then if we wanted to continue on to a third intermediate slope, we would evaluate that slope at the location xi plus a weight, somewhere between 0 and 1, of a3 times h. And at the corresponding y value, we now know two slopes, k1 and k2. And we can therefore use an average of those two slopes. And that's expressed by evaluating the right-hand side function f at yi plus a weight b31 times the first slope that we calculated, k1, times the step size h. But plus, since we now know already a second slope, k2, we can bring that into the picture by adding to it a weight b32 times k2 times the step size h. And we would continue doing this until we reach the nth slope. So k sub n would be evaluated at some intermediate point xi plus a n times the step size h. And the y value that corresponds to this point would be yi plus, we're at the nth slope, so b sub n1 times k1 times h plus b sub n2 times the second slope, k2 times h, and so on until the last slope that we calculated prior to kn, which would be kn minus 1. So plus b n sub n minus 1 times k sub n minus 1, the prior slope, times the step size h. Now the specific values of how many intermediate slopes we use, so this n, and the weights c sub i, and these parameters a sub i and the b sub i j, the spe specific combination of those values define the actual Runge-Kata method. Now how do we determine these values? Well, we want to minimize the truncation error, meaning we want to optimize, increase the truncation error order of the resulting method. So let's try this out, and the simplest possible RK method would just use a single slope. So n would be equal to 1, which means that the slope would be the weight c1 times the slope k1, and k1 is the right-hand side of the ODE evaluated at my current known solution xi, yi. So that means that yi plus 1 would be yi plus the slope which is c1 times k1. k1 is f of xi yi, so I can substitute this in. And that would be my new value yi plus 1 if I then multiply the slope by h. 
Okay, now I'm going to, I have basically one variable to choose here, the C1, and I'm going to choose it in such a way that the truncation error is minimized. Now for the error we need the true solution of course, but we're going to use the Taylor series trick we've applied previously, assuming that my current known point x i y i would be the true solution. So if we do this, if we apply the Taylor series trick, we get that the true solution at y i plus 1 is equal to the solution at y i, which I'm assuming for the time being that this is the true solution there as well, plus h times the first derivative dy dx evaluated at x i, plus a half h squared times the second derivative of y with respect to x evaluated at some unknown location xi i between xi and xi plus 1. That would then mean that the local error is equal to the true solution y i plus 1 minus y i. Well, that should be the true solution. Yeah, it's the uh, true, the uh, local error is the true solution at y i plus 1 minus my numerical solution at y i plus 1, which I get from my rk1 method. And if I substitute in the Taylor series for the true solution, I get yi plus h times f evaluated at xi, yi plus a half h squared times the second derivative evaluated at the unknown location xi i. And I am subtracting the numerical solution that comes from the rk1 method, so I'm going to substitute that formula in. So I'm going to subtract yi and I'm going to subtract c1 times f evaluated at xi yi times h. Now that's my local error. And I can simplify this equation because there's a yi minus a yi, so those two cancel each other out. And I am left with, well, I'm left with h times f of xi yi minus c1 times f of xi, and both of them are multiplied by h. So that gives me a 1 minus c1 times h times f evaluated at xi yi plus the second order terms, a half h squared, the second derivative evaluated at some unknown location psi i. Now, if I look at this first term here, what do I have to choose c1, or what value would be c1 if I wanted to get rid of this entire term? Well, if I choose c1 equal to 1, then I'm eliminating this first order error term. Right, it completely goes away. So let me do that. Let me choose c1 is equal to 1. The first order error term drops away, and if I use c1 in the update formula, I get yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus f at xi yi times h. And my local error then is second order. It's proportional to h squared. And if you look at this formula, then you realize that this is really the forward Euler formula. And it turns out that this is the optimal method that we can do if we only use the slope at one point in the interval. So for n equal to 1, forward Euler is the optimal RK1 method. Now let's improve on this and let's use two points. So the average of slopes at two arbitrary points in the interval. So little n is equal to 2. So my slope is c1 times k1 plus the second slope weighted with c2. k1 is still the slope evaluated at my current known solution xi yi. But now my second slope k2 is equal to the right hand side evaluated at xi plus a2 times h, where a2 is somewhere between 0 and 1. And then the y value that I need to evaluate this second slope is at yi plus a weight b21 times my currently known slope k1 times the step size of h. Okay, so let's put this all together. That means that my new value yi plus 1 is equal to my prior value yi plus the slope, which is c1 times k1, which is f of xi yi, plus my c2 times the k2. And the k2 was 
f of xi plus a2h and yi plus b21 times k1 times h. Okay, and then this entire slope has to be multiplied by the step size h. Now, I have the following parameters to choose. C1, C2, A2, and B21. So I have four choices to make, and I'm going to choose these values such that I'm going to minimize the truncation error or optimize, increase the order of the local error. For the true solution, I'm going to use the Taylor series trick again, assuming that xi, yi would be my true solution. And if I do this, this will result in three equations for the four parameters. And those three equations are c1 plus c2 has to be equal to 1, c2 times a2 has to be equal to 1 half, and c2 times b21 has to be equal to 1 half as well. So I have three equations for the four parameters, which means that there are infinitely many solutions, which also means that there are infinitely many RK2 methods that optimize, make it as large as possible, the order of the method. And here are some examples. So the way to find all four parameters is to choose one of them, set them to some number. So let's choose c1 equal to 0. If I set this value c1 equal to 0, the other three values follow from the three equations. So if c1 is equal to 0, then c2 has to be equal to 1. c2 is equal to 1, then a2 has to be equal to 1 half. And c2 being 1 forces b21 to be equal to 1 half as well. So let's plug this into the update formula. That means yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus c1, but c1 is 0, so that term drops out, plus c2, but c2 is equal to 1, so 1 times f of xi plus a2 times h, but a2 is equal to 1 half, so plus 1 half h. And then y is evaluated at yi plus well, b21, but b21 is a half, so yi plus a half f at xi yi, that's my k1, right, times h. And then this entire thing has to be multiplied by h. So let's look at this formula. I am using the right-hand side evaluated at xi plus a half h, which is the midpoint, right, in the interval from xi to xi plus 1 with a step size of h. And I'm evaluating the right-hand side at a y-value that is yi plus a half h times f at xi yi. Right? That is like a forward Euler step with half a step size, so a half h as the step size. Well, that's exactly our midpoint method, right? Our midpoint Euler method. Now let's try a different thing, right? Let's choose c1 is equal to 1 half. Well, if c1 is equal to 1 half, then c2 has to be equal to 1 half as well. And if c2 is equal to 1 half, then a2 has to be equal to 1. And b21 has to be equal to 1 as well. Now let's plug these values into our update formula. So yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus c1 is a half, so plus a half f of xi yi times h plus c2 is a half as well. So plus a half f at where? Well, xi plus a2, which is 1 times h, so xi plus h. And for my y value, where I have to evaluate my right-hand side function f, I get yi plus b21, but b21 is 1. So 1 times f at xi yi, that's my k1, right, times h, k. Okay. And then this entire thing, slope, has to be evaluated at h as well. So let's look at this update formula. All right, if you look at this, we take yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus, and now we are just going to do the average of the slope evaluated at xi yi and xi plus 1 
yi plus 1. Well, that's the modified Euler method. So just by choosing c1 equal to 1 half, we get the modified Euler method. Choosing it equal to c1 equal to 0, we get the midpoint method. And here's one other example. Because we can choose any value for c1, let's choose c1 is equal to 1 third. Well, then c2 has to be equal to 2 thirds, because the sum has to be equal to 1. A2 has to be equal to 3 fourths, because then 2 thirds times 3 fourths is equal to 2 fourths, so 1 half. And b21 has to be equal to 3 fourths as well. Now let's plug this into the update formula. So we get yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus c1 is 1 third. So 1 third f at xi yi times h plus c2 is 2 thirds. So 2 thirds f xi plus, well, the a2 is 3 quarters. So xi plus 3 quarters h. And then the y is to be about, is the y that we use in the f of xi y function is yi plus b21, that's 3 quarters, 3 quarters times f at xi yi times h. And then this entire thing, this entire slope, is multiplied by the step size h again. So that's a different update formula that has the optimal order as well. And that method is called Ralston's method. But there are infinitely many choices that we can do. We can pick any c1 value at all. Now, all of these methods are globally second order. They're locally third order. Globally, they are second order. OK, let's push this further. Let's use three points. So little n is equal to 3, which means our slope is the average of three intermediate slopes, k1, k2, k3, with weights c1, c2, and c3. K1 is the slope evaluated at the starting point, xi, yi. The second slope is evaluated at an intermediate point, xi plus a2h, using yi plus a weight b21 times k1 times h. And our third slope is evaluated at the intermediate point, xi plus a3 times h, where a3 is between 0 and 1. And the y value that we use is yi plus an update using the average of the already known slopes, k1 and k2. So plus b31 times k1 times h plus b32 times k2 times h. So if we count the number of unknowns here, those would be 8, c1, c2, c3. And then we have um, the two a's and the three b's. So eight choices that we can make, and we choose them such that the truncation error is again minimized. For the true solution, we use again the Taylor series trick. And again, we'll find that we don't have enough equations. There are infinitely many solutions possible. Among them is the so-called classical Rangakata 3 method or the classical RK3 method. And that has the values of c1 is equal to 1 6, c2 is equal to 4 6, c3 is equal to 1 6. So you see that the sum of these c values again adds up to 1, indicating that we have a weighted average of the intermediate slopes k1, k2, and k3. The a2 is equal to 1 half. The a3 is equal to 1. So we go half a step into to the midpoint, and we go to the end point. And the b21 is a half, the b31 is equal to negative 1, and the b32 is equal to 2. Okay, so if I combine all of these things together, I'll find that yi plus 1 is equal to yi plus 1 sixth of k1 plus 4k2 plus k3, entire thing times h. The k1 is simply f evaluated at xi, yi. The k2, using the values of a2 and b21, the k2 is the right-hand side evaluated at the midpoint using a forward Euler step of a half h. And the k3 is evaluated at xi plus 1 times h. And the y value there is yi minus k1 times h 
plus 2 times the k2 times h. So that's the classical RK3 method um, that we will use in some of the examples. But there are other combinations that are possible. In fact, there are infinitely many possibilities for methods. And you can choose one of these values, C1, determine the others, and make your own method if you like. Here are some standard examples from the book. There's the classical method that we talked about. Here are the coefficients as well listed in the table for Nystrom's methods, uh, the nearly optimal RK3 method, and Hoyne's third RK3 method. All these methods are locally fourth order, and globally they're all third order accurate. Now let's go even further one more time. Let's go to four intermediate slopes. So we have the weighted average of four slopes, k1 through k4, with their weights c1 through c4. The first value, k1, is the value evaluated at the right. k2 is evaluated at an intermediate point, k xi plus a2 times h. k3 is evaluated at the intermediate point, xi plus a3h. And then there's a k4 that's evaluated at a fourth intermediate point, xi plus a4 times h. And in each one of those k values, we use the prior calculated k values. So for example, for k4, we use the previously calculated k1, k2, and k3, and do an average of those to find the intermediate value for y that we use in the calculation of k4. Now this will give us 13 unknowns that we can choose uh, to minimize the truncation error. And again, we'll find infinitely many solutions. So here is one example for an RK4 method, the so-called classical RK4 method. The values of the weights C1 and C4 are both 1 sixth, and the values for C2 and C3 are both 2 sixth. The values of A2, A3, B21, and B2, uh, B32, so B21 and B32 are all 1 half. The values of A4 and B43 are both 1, and the values of B31, B41, B42 are all 0. So let's plug these values in. Yi plus 1 is Yi plus 1 6 of times k1 plus 2k2 plus 2k3 plus k4, and the entire thing multiplied by the step size of h. k1 is simply the right-hand side evaluated at xi, yi, my known for solution point. k2, using these variables, is equal to the right-hand side evaluated at the midpoint, so xi plus a half h, and yi plus a half h times k1. k3 is then equal to, again the midpoint, xi plus a half h, and yi plus a half the k2, the previously calculated slope, times h. And then k4 finally is equal to xi plus h, so we're going to the right end of the interval. And the y value is yi plus the previously calculated slope k3 times h. And those are the k values then that we can plug into the first formula to find the new solution value yi plus 1. Now this method is locally fifth order, but globally, and remember we classify these methods by their global error, so this method is globally fourth order. Now we can go even higher order, um, bringing in more intermediate slopes, but at some point some trade-offs start to kick in. Because the higher the order, the more storage we need, right? We need to store all of these intermediate k values to then combine them to find the update. So the more intermediate points we use, the more storage we need to have for all of the ki's. And the higher the order, the more computations we need per step, right? Because we have to evaluate a new right-hand side at some new value x, y, whatever it might be, for each one of these k values. 
And if the evaluation of these right-hand sides is very costly, then that could significantly impact our overall computation cost. So that means that in typical engineering applications, RK3 and RK4 methods are the Rangakata methods that are most commonly used. Thank you for watching.